Hi, boys and girls. It's Miss Bissell. We're on lesson 8-8, eight, eight, Multiplication as Scaling. We are in our volume two textbook on page 499. Our essential question that's going to guide us through this lesson is how can you use number sense to evaluate the size of a product? So we're going to work the solve and share problem just to get a good grip of this concept. And it says without multiplying, circle the problem in each set with the greatest product and underline the problem with the least product. We're, we're going to solve the problem any way you choose. Our little fifth grade helper says we can use reasoning. How can you use what you know about multiplying fractions to help you find the problem with the greatest product? So in order to do that, I've made a couple notes here. All right, just a little bit of a review. So if we want to review fraction values, all right, remember those proper fractions where the numerator is less than the denominator always have a value of less than one whole. All right, we're looking at one out of five parts. So five, five fifths would be the whole thing. So if you think of it in terms of that, you can see why proper fractions are less than one whole. Mixed numbers and improper fractions, on the other hand, have a value greater than one whole. So if you're looking at two and a half, think about cupcakes. You would have two whole cupcakes and then one half of a cupcake. So you'd have a little more than two, but less than three. All right, 11 fifths, that improper fraction, that is going to convert to a mixed number or a whole number. In this case, it's going to be a mixed number. Five goes into 11 two times with one fifth left over. I also know that five fifths is one whole. So I definitely know that 11 fifths is going to have a value greater than one whole. So that's an understanding that I have been developing with you since we have begun working with fractions in fifth grade. So you guys should be good with that. Now, let's talk about some things that happen when we multiply. So if we have two numbers, whether they're whole numbers or fractions, and they have a value greater than one, all right, our product is greater than one, okay? So five times two is 10. So what I'm trying to get at here is that when I have two factors that each have a value greater than one, then the product is going to be greater than one. All right. If I have two factors that are less than one in value, what happens is the product is going to be also less than one in value. So if I multiply one half times one third, I get one sixth. So anytime I have two numbers that have a value less than one whole, whether it's fractions or decimals, then the product's going to be less than one whole. And here, if I multiply a number, whether it's a whole number or a mixed number or a decimal number, if I multiply it by a fraction that has a value of one, so what that's going to be is a fraction where the numerator and denominator are the same number. Isn't that a form of one? Anytime you multiply a number times a form of one or one itself, then the product is the first factor. It is itself. Three and a half times two halves is the same as, as thinking of three and a half times one, which would equal itself, three and a half. And that's because of that multiplicative identity, that property of one. All right. So knowing those few foundation concepts going into this lesson are going to help us. All right, so let's look at our problem again. So set A, we need to find the, um, the problem, the expression that's going to give us the value that's less, least and the value that's greatest. So if I multiply a number 2 times 1 half, so I have one fraction or one factor that has a value less than 1, so isn't it true that my answer is going to be less than two. If I multiply two times one, it's going to give it me itself. So if I multiply two times a fraction that has a value less than one, then the product's going to be less than one. All right. So let's talk about the next one. I've got three thirds. Well, three thirds is a form of one. So if I multiply a number times one, it's going to equal itself. All right. And then I have a fraction that I'm multiplying times a form of one. Four fourths would be a form of one. So that answer right there is actually going to be itself five six. All right, so let's take a look at these. 
Obviously, the number with the greatest value would be a product greater than two. So this expression, one half times two, is going to yield a product with the greatest value. And then these two, I know exactly what the product is. And the one with the least value is the proper fraction, five, six. So we're going to underline this expression. All right, boys and girls, for set two, I noticed that two and a half is in each of these expressions. So let's look at the factor that's with two and a half to determine if the value is going to be less than, greater than, or equal to two and a half. So when I look at A, I have two and a half being multiplied by three and three fourths. So let's go back and think about this. Two and a half multiplied by one would give it, give us the product two and a half but we're multiplying it by a number with a value greater than one. So what I know is that my answer is going to be greater than two and a half. All right, B, I'm multiplying two and a half times three fourths. Well, three fourths is a proper fraction. It has a value less than one whole. So if I multiplied two and a half times one whole, it would equal two and a half but I'm multiplying it times a factor less than one whole. So it's going to give me a product that is less than two and a half. All right. And the last one, hope you all picked up that we're multiplying two and a half times a form of one. So anytime we multiply a number, whether it's a whole number, a mixed number, whether it's a decimal number, because of the multiplicative identity, the property of one, it's going to equal itself. So I'm going to get two and a half as the product when I multiply four fourths times two and a half. So my greatest value is going to be expression A because it's going to give me a value greater than two and a half. And the smallest value is going to come from this expression, three fourths times two and a half, because it's going to give me a value less than two and a half. All right, let's take a look at set three. I don't see any common factors in all three of these, so let's think through what's going on here. Set A, or I'm sorry, number A, I'm multiplying three fourths times six six. There it is. That form of one. So we know that three fourths times one or any form of one is going to equal three fourths because of that multiplicative identity, that property of one. All right. Now I'm going to take a look at this number right here, three fourths and one and five six. Since my factor three fourths has a value less than one, then when I multiply it times one and five six, it's going to give me a product that's less than one and five six. Just think about multiplying one times one and five six. That would equal one and five six. But since we're multiplying by a value less than one whole, then our product's going to be less than one and five six. And then the very last problem, we are multiplying by a form of one. So our answer is going to be five six. All right. So when we take a look at these, what I notice, I notice that the product with the greatest value is going to be B, three fourths times one and one, five, six. And then I have to decide is three fourths smaller in value or is five, six? You know, a real quick way, using those benchmark fractions, they're both going to round up to one whole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare them, making them equivalent fractions. So we did this a couple chapters ago. We have three-fifths and we have five-sixths. The least common denominator is 12 because that's the least common multiple. We could have done a multiple list using four and six. And there it was. Okay, we did that. All right. We scale up. Six times two gives us 12. So five times two gives us 10. All right. When we scale up, four times three gives me 12. So three times three gives me ninths. So working with equivalent fractions, I have nine twelfths or 10 twelfths. This one is the smaller value, which means that the expression that gave me three fourths 
is going to be the smallest value. Okay. All right. I'll let you look back over those and think about that a minute. And then we're going to talk about the look back at the bottom of the page. All right. How is three thirds like or times two like one times two? All right. I hope that everybody notices that three thirds times two is going to give us the same product as one times two. And that is because three thirds is a form of one. All right. So if we multiply three thirds times two, that is the same as saying one times two. And we get that it's going to equal two, right? Just like one times two is going to equal two. All right. On the next page, you do have the visual learning scenario here. You're welcome to watch the video in our Google Classroom. It's a relatively short video re-explaining the same things that I just talked about. But I think that we're going to just go ahead and do a couple problems and see if you guys get the hang of this. OK. All right. So in numbers three through five, without multiplying, we're going to decide which symbol belongs in the box. So we're looking at three and a half times two and two thirds. And we want to know, is the product going to be less than, greater than, or equal to two and two thirds? So let's take a look and see what two and two thirds is going to be multiplied by. The factor is three and a half. So that factor has a value greater than one. So if we multiply any number times another factor greater than one, then our product is going to be greater than that second factor. If we multiplied two and two thirds times one, it would equal two and two thirds, right? But we're multiplying two and two thirds times a value greater than one. So the product is going to be greater than the second factor. All right, let's look at number four. This time we want to know is four fifths times two and two thirds going to give us a product that's less than, greater than, or equal to two and two thirds? Well, two and two thirds is being multiplied by four fifths. Four fifths is a proper fraction, so it has a value less than one whole. So let's go back. If we multiplied two and two thirds times one, it would equal itself but we are multiplying it times a factor less than one. So the product will be less than two and two thirds. All right. Again, going back to that essential question, we're using number sense to help us evaluate the size of the product. All right. Let's take a look at our last ex example here. Four and three fifths multiplied by four fourths. And we want to know, is that product going to be less than, greater than, or equal to four and three fifths? Well, I know that four fourths is a form of one. So using that multiplicative identity, the property of one, anytime I multiply a factor times a form of one or one itself, it's going to equal itself. All right. There we go. All right, let's try something here. If you feel like you've got this concept, then you can work problems six and 17 and come back to these with me. They're really quick. Just have to analyze your factors. And if you feel like you need to go through it, then I'm going to work through these and explain it. All right, so number six. Two and a half times one and two third. I want to know is that product less than, greater than, or equal to one and two thirds? So one and two thirds is being multiplied by two and a half, which has a value greater than one whole. So my product is going to be greater than one and two thirds. All right, let's take a look at number seven. Three fifths times four and four fifths. And I want to know, will the product be less than, greater than, or equal to four and four fifths? Well, four and four fifths is being multiplied by the factor three fifths, which is less than one whole. 
So I know it's going to yield a product less than four and four fifths. Again, if I multiplied one times four and four fifths, it would equal itself. But I'm multiplying by a factor less in value than one whole. All right, number eight, one and two sevenths times five fifths. And I want to know, is that value going to be less than, greater than, or equal to one and two sevenths? Well, one and two sevenths is being multiplied by five fifths. Five fifths is a form of one. So I'm going to have a product that is one and two sevenths. It equals one and two sevenths. All right, number nine, one third times two and two fifths. I want to know, is the product going to be less than, greater than, or equal to two and two fifths? Well, two and two fifths is being multiplied by one third. One third has a value less than one whole. So my product is going to be less than two and two fifths. Number 10, three and three fifths times two halves. I hope you just now realize that that product is going to be equal to three and three fifths. And that's because we're multiplying the three and three fifths times a form of one. Number 11, four and one third times two and two sevenths. We're comparing that. Is the product going to be less than, greater than, or equal to two and two sevenths? Well, the factor I'm multiplying two and two sevenths by is four and a third. That definitely has a value greater than one whole. So my product will be greater than two and two sevenths. All right, number 12. I'm multiplying two and one fifth times one tenth. I want to know is the value going to be less than, greater than, or equal to two and one fifth? You know what? I'm multiplying two and one fifth times one tenth. The value is going to be less than two and one fifth because one tenth has a value of less than one whole. Number 13, I'm multiplying one half times one and two fifths. I want to know is the value of this, is the product going to be less than, greater than, or equal to one and two fifths? I notice I'm multiplying one and two fifths times a value that has, or a, sorry, a factor that has a value less than one whole. So my product is going to be less than one and two fifths. Number 14, I am multiplying four and three fourths times three and a fourth. I want to know, is the product going to be less than, greater than, or equal to four and three fourths? Well, when I look at it, I'm multiplying four and three fourths times a mixed number with a value greater than one. So I know the product is going to be greater than four and three fourths. Number 15, I'm multiplying one and one twelfth times one and three fourths. I notice that I'm multiplying one and three fourths times a, pro, a, a factor with a value greater than one whole. So my product is going to be greater than one and three fourths. Number 16, I am multiplying five and one third times five six. I want to know is the product going to be less than, greater than, or equal to five and one third? Five and one third is being multiplied by a proper fraction with a value of less than one. So the product will actually be less than five and one third. And number 17, one or five fifths times four and two thirds, will the product be less than, greater than, or equal to five, four and two thirds? I noticed five fifths is a form of one. So because of the multiplicative product property, when I multiply this factor times a form of one, it's going to equal itself. All right. The directions change a little bit for 18 and 19. So without multiplying, we're going to order the products from the least to the greatest. So I'm going to take a look at number 18. And I notice that when I multiply 2 times 3 fifths, ah, everything's multiplied by 3 fifths. So I'm going to be looking at the 2. I'm going to be looking at the 2 and a fourth. Uh, I'm going to be looking at the factor 3 fourths and the factor 5 fifths. All right, so really what I need to do is look at the circled factors. Those are going to tell me what the value is going to be in order of least to greatest. So the only one that I am multiplying three-fifths by a factor less than one whole is this one right here, three-fourths times three-fifths. Three-fourths has a value of less than one. So... Three-fourths times three-fifths 
is going to give me the smallest product. I'm going to mark that out so I don't use it again. All right. When I look at the other three expressions, I notice that three-fifths is being multiplied by two. All right. That's going to give me a value that's double three-fifths. This time it's two and a fourth, so it's going to be even larger because this factor is larger. But take a look at this one. I am actually multiplying by a form of one. So what I'm going to get here is a product equal to three fifths. So that would be the next in order. Five fifths times three fifths. All right. So we can mark that one out. And then that leaves me which one would have the next value. And yep, you're right. It's going to be when I multiply three fifths times two. Two is a smaller factor than two and one fourth. So two times three fifths will give me the next highest or next greatest product. And last would be my two and one fourth times three fifths. Okay. So I've used all four of them. So I'm looking. I have a value less than one, a value of one. I have a value greater than one, that is two, and a value greater than one, that's two and a fourth, which is greater than two. So that puts them in order from least to greatest according to what their products will be. All right, number 19 is very similar. I noticed that the constant factor in each of these expressions is two thirds. So I'm looking at the one fifth the four and a half, the one third, and the four holes to determine the value of the product when I multiply the factor I circled times two thirds. So looking for the least, I know that four is a whole number greater than one. That's going to give me a product greater than two thirds. Same with this one. So really I'm looking at these two proper fractions. So I have to figure out which one has the smallest value. So when I look at them, if I'm not 100% sure, you know what? I can always write equivalent fractions to make that determination. So if I'm looking at one fifth and I'm looking at one third, all right, I'm just going to use the easiest common denominator. So three times five is 15. All right, so we're going to scale up three times five equals 15. So I multiplied one times five to get five fifteenths. Five times three is 15. So one times three is three. So when I look at these, this particular one has the lowest value, one fifth. OK, so one fifth is going to be the smallest value. So one fifth times two thirds is going to yield the least value of all of these expressions it can give us the product with the least value. So that means that one third would be next. Both of those have a value of less than one whole and our other two expressions have a value greater than one whole. Since four is less than four and a half, but we're multiplying it times the same factor, then this one would yield the smaller product. And the four and a half times two thirds will yield the largest product. And again, make sure when you're done, you go back and make sure you went from least to greatest value. All right. Now, 20 to 21. Oh, boy, they're really trying to trick us because they want us to go from greatest to least value. All right. So I'm looking at number 20. I noticed that three fourths is the consistent factor in all four of my expressions. So we need to look at the factor with it. So I have three, two thirds, one and a fourth and four fourths. All right. When I look at these, I'm looking for the greatest value. I've got three. That's values greater than one. Two thirds is a value of less than one. One and a fourth is greater than one whole and four fourths is one whole. So here it is. It's between these two expressions and I'm multiplying three fourths times three, which would yield a greater product than multiplying it times one and one fourth. So three times three fourths will give us the product with the greatest value. And then one and one fourth times three fourths would give us the second greatest value. All right. Multiplying times one 
a form of one here, multiplying times a value less than one. So four fourths times three fourths would give us the next smallest value. And the one up here that gives us the least value is multiplying three fourths times two thirds because it is the only factor with three fourths that has a value less than one whole. And make sure again, I'm looking at these, I'm going from greatest to least. And I'm doing that, I'm just kind of taking a peek at those factors that are with three fourths. And yes, I'm sure I went from greatest value to least value with my projected products. All right, number 21, the very last one. We are multiplying one third times three thirds. I know that's a form of one. We're multiplying it by four, by two and two thirds, and by two and one third. So we're looking for which of these factors have the greatest value. There it is, four. So four times one third will give us the product with the greatest value. All right, three thirds would be equal to one. Forgot to do that up there. All right, two and two thirds and two and one third. Well, two and two thirds has a greater value than two and one third. Looking at that numerator, the whole numbers are the same, the denominators are the same. So two and two thirds times one third would give me a value greater than two and one third times one third. And then the smallest value up here would be three thirds times one third. This is multiplying one third times itself to give it that product would be one third. So three thirds times one third would give us the least value. So then we're going to check and make sure did we go from greatest to least four, two and two thirds, two and one thirds, three thirds. We are good to go. All right. So boys and girls. Today, we really worked on using number sense. We went back, made sure we understood that proper fact fractions have values less than one whole. Mixed numbers and improper fractions have values of one whole. And then we touched on any time you have a fraction where the numerator and the denominator are the same, then you have a fraction that has a value that is equal to one whole. All right, so this is the premise of our whole lesson. Your work is on pages 503 to 504. You could also, if you choose, you can do the practice buddy. It is posted in our Google Classroom under our work for lessons 8-8. Just make sure you have a piece of paper, boys and girls, and you are working out the problems, not just randomly picking answers, okay, or randomly jotting down numbers, okay? You want to do your best, whether you're doing the book work or whether you're doing the practice buddy. All right. I hope that you guys found this lesson relatively easy. It's, again, we were using number sense to evaluate the size of a product. Good luck with your homework and I will see you tomorrow.